covers only that particular maggot or that particular stage of the larva would have reached so it contributes to investigations in forensic entomology health i'm not going into detail uh, we already discussed and i know i hope all of you will know about the uh, mosquitoes and how they spread diseases malaria uh, one of the uh, important disease which is on the rise due to climate change global warming uh, increases the uh, incidence of malaria how the um, this particular factor the extrinsic incubation period eip that is a malarial parasite parasite develops very quickly inside the mosquito's body so the same mosquito can transmit a lot number of uh, can transmit malaria to a lot number of people in its life cycle so the spread actually increases that is how uh, this global warming uh, affecting the spread of uh, diseases like malaria another huge group of insects which are very much related to plants very my most of them are minute white flies aphids scale insects just now we discussed in detail on that mealybug papaya mealybug majority of them are pest so th those interested maybe uh, have, we can have a different session on bugs hemiptera alone because that much a was topic each and every section here it is i'm sure you would have you are all familiar with you would have seen them at least the cicada uh, that that which makes shrilling sound actually our silent valley got its name thinking that there are no cicadas but it it was not true we do have cicadas in silent valley also some are very colorful like this particular fulgorid uh and uh, see see this particular tree hopper membracidae it is having very funny horn like structures on the head and body so each adaptation may have one particular reason why this particular horn and how they are thriving in the environment and a lot more is to be known on all these insects again a wide groups this uh, cymex bed bug we all know how how irritable it can be when we go to some theaters not now in the malls and all but in my childhood days and all when we go to the nearby theaters small theater which have film theater i am telling which have that uh, palm leaf uh, roof and all you are sure to get the bite of uh, this bed bug on the seats so Uh, hemipterans this particular group are mostly related to plants except a few like bed bugs in the water you will have seen this slender looking bug this one also these are all water dwelling aquatic insects this also you will find very beautiful just like the jewel bug we discussed already very beautiful uh, seeing on the leaves so we are not going into detail on the locust it was in the news uh, in the recent these are all uh, photographs and envis had a detailed newsletter released last month on the locust attack which happened in india it is due to the desert locust cystocera gregaria and see how they are covering the trees this is a photo from madhya pradesh uh, so not every time we have such attacks but this year unfortunately we had this but uh, not much economic damage happened termites very interesting group how many of you know that uh, that the flies which come near the tube lights uh, in the evenings during the rainy season they are actually the flying form of termites so termites are known for their caste system 
means they have the soldier caste worker caste like the ants ants also have this division of labor so the soldiers are meant to defend the colony workers are meant to work they work day and night they cannot enjoy any luxury or anything of that sort queen and the uh, male the uh, king they are there to uh, expand the lineage that's all so there is clear division of labor this is one of the most primitive termite in india we have only uh, one species seen in the western himalaya very big termite almost almost 1 inch in length it is seen in the decayed wood termite categories dry wood damp wood subterranean many categories are there and it is the subterranean group which is doing the most uh, severe uh, this kind of economic damage the you, you would have seen the mound of termites and this is the in south india it is odontotermis obesus which is the mount building but we have different species in north india on the in the north east it is different and for termites alone maybe uh, some 2 to 3 hours of uh, detailed talks only will give you that basic details that much interesting group longest insect just see it's almost 56.7 cm this stick insect it is uh, preserved in british museum tiniest insect nanometer uh, less than uh, less than 1 mm we have this in india kikiki huna is the name very minute it's a parasitoid but very beautiful you can find this uh, wings with large number of hairs they are called fairy flies this is the importance of insects in the ecosystem parasitism parasitoid predation mimicry see this is not an ant you just count the legs 1 2 3 and 4 this is a spider which is mimicking an ant camouflage yeah this looks like a dead leaf but it is actually a butterfly of course i need not explain anything about the uh, this kind of caterpillars uh, which can cause severe irritation to your skin so pollination when we were telling we were discussing on bee pollination but not only bees butterflies moths flies thrips beetles wasps and also ants all are contributing in their own ways to pollination but mainly it is the bee who do the pollination see just see the this uh, this picture i'm sure you are familiar with this plant this is lantana you will have this uh, in your garden so just watch have you watched the flowers morning it will be a different color evening it will be a different color how does this happen it is because of the pollination and the effect on the color so pollination triggers the synthesis of anthocyanin it is a pigment flower pigment so it masks the carotenoids so the color of the flower changes so it is an indication also to the approaching insect that i am done you don't come to me i am already pollinated and uh, i don't have much nectar le left for you it is a it is an indication to the insect also what is a gall tumor like growth on the leaves if you see the underside you can see the holes if it is a mature gall these are all uh, by the by several kinds of insects who lay their eggs on the leaves which cause the multiplication it is just like our human cancerous growth like what is cancer it is a multiplication of cells uncontrolled multiplication of cells the same thing is happening in the plant and the particular insect laying its eggs there triggers that physiological process and uh, it, uh, it it is uh, deleterious to the plant uh, 
because the photosynthesis and such activities cannot happen much. Many groups induce galls in plants. These are another examples like invasive groups on eucalyptus. This particular insect made galls on erythrina. This particular insect uh, has made galls. These are all coming from uh, South America and Mexico and doing all these things here. Invasive alien species. Uh, if our enemies newsletter, again, I'm telling you those those interested can please approach me. I can send you the copies. It will give you a basic idea of uh, several groups of invasive alien uh, species in India. This is about the termite, uh, which is an invasive species. Um, mostly in the agriculture sector. In, in the last decade, if you see, um, of the 12 species which were known as invasive, they are all that mealybugs, which one example is a papaya mealybug, which we just discussed. So this name you will, rem you, uh, you will remember when we discussed on the one of the initial slides, like Ephemeroptera mayfly, caddis fly, stone fly. EPT score is very important when you are talking on indicators of pollution. Means um, these larvae, the larvae of these insects are aquatic and they can live only if the water is rich in oxygen. So if you see quite a good number of this particular larvae in the water, you don't need to do any particular test regarding the quality of the water. It will be pure, rich in oxygen. So they are excellent indicators of uh, streams, aquatic streams. Same way, in, uh, people in the cities will be familiar to this. When you open the trap, uh, tap water, sometimes some reddish um, thread-like structures come along with the water. They are actually chironomous larvae of a, of a fly, like mosquito-like fly. If you find them, sure, the water is polluted from some septic tanks or a nearby. Your drinking water is polluted. 100%, you don't need to do any further test. Organic waste pollution is there. For research, they make use of drosophila, the small fly if you keep the fruits uh, banana and all open you will find them very easily so any any genetic um, any kind of scientific research this is the model organism not going into detail honey of course insect product very uh, good commercial value lac from lac insects dye red dye is made from cochineal insect these are all in addition to the silk, which we discussed in detail earlier. Caterpillar fungus, Cordyceps sinensis, Kida jadi is the common name, but it is seen only in very high altitude, 3,800 meter and above in Sikkim and such Himalayan belt. It is a combination of a particular caterpillar and a fungus. It is very popular in Tibetan and Chinese medicine and very expensive. Uh, this also, agar agar or atar. Again, this is the uh, plantation where the trees are uh, grown. One particular moth, the larvae bore hole into the trunk. Then some fungus growth will happen in the in the hole, then the tree, as its immunity, secretes some oleoresin. Altogether, this black structure, the, this black complex, is what you call agar wood. And on steam distillation, the expensive perfume, attar oil, is extracted. So these are all products from insects. Edible insects. A uh, very challenging field. Termites are edible, grasshoppers are edible, and uh, some beetles are edible. Uh, very popular in the northeast, not much in southern India, but in the tribals uh, living in the western Ghats, 
they do feed uh, they do take this termites they fry the um, termites and they say it is as delicious as groundnuts and uh, regarding the protein value uh, this grasshoppers are very rich and known this these two photographs are uh, my own photographs from the northeast when i was traveling through manipur on the roadside i could see uh, this uh, women selling um, uh, bunches of these insects these are all immature stages of odonates and water bugs these are all dragon maybe if you let them develop they will fly once as a dragon fly or a damsel fly so in the northeast it's very common one of the last slides um insects are also contributing as model organisms for a sustainable future see the termite mound is an excellent example of how temperature is regulated within the same um, principle was followed in a building in harare and without ac they could function it perfectly so the model has been taken from this nest it is called biomimicry the whole concept you are copying from an insect or an any animal uh, that is energy is never wasted everything the nature has created only for the betterment that is the principle and uh, similarly you have the anti reflective uh, technology this even the canon uh, this camera have used this technology in the lens and the um, uh, vehicles have used them in their uh, headlamps and all uh, the eyes are having nano structures which are smaller in size of the uh, wavelength of visible light so they don't reflect light much so this principle also taken from the animal world so many examples are there i just quoted the most popular two it's all nature plus designed for a sustainable future it is biomimicry so to conclude see if human beings were not impressed by size alone they would consider an ant more wonderful than a rhinoceros i don't think i need to explain further you would have certainly come to know how marvelous an insect is so thank you very much uh, thank you rajmohan uh, for this uh, wonderful journey you take us to the world of insects that was unaware of uh, of us and uh, it was really interesting and enjoyable and we could know lot of things and uh, interest, uh, interesting knowledge about the kikiki huna the smallest one yes and about and one more thing that we we are imitating things from the nature that's why the harare that building is uh, building structure is uh, yes, 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 the, yes. is uh, yes. Yes. Water and everything <laughs> and uh, pure water indicator all these things we could uh, know from these things and <clears throat> this webinar especially it was a eye opening to the all the students because they were uh, looking these creatures for a just a little bit curiosity only they never think about what's behind it what it is now i can say that some of these students around 40 students were there here and they will search for these things somehow they may reach in uh, set aside like the institutions or somehow uh, sometimes they may reach in the international space station or in the form of astronauts also we expect that things and that's a creativity uh, we feel from these things and uh, we have few more uh, scientists here available here and normally after every discussion we'll get a reflection from our, from our yeah, sure. uh, honorable ek kutti sir and after that i will invite uh, tamban sir also for making a reflection on these things and i request tamban sir to be with us for a few moments okay and uh, and i invite ek kutti sir to make a reflection on these uh, i'm sorry i overstepped little bit i i exceeded no, my no. no no really really it was worthy ma'am we and we all enjoyed it and welcome good sir oh thank you sajil mars it's a very very exciting afternoon i have not had an occasion to listen to this subject 
which is so much was so was so was so fast you don't know i didn't want the talk to conclude because it's going in such a way that you know it is getting into areas you know which our students who are listening it 40 45 of them are here listening uh, it, it is an it's an endless uh, imagination for them of their knowledge and curiosity about what is around them see we live with these impacts they are cohabitants with us they are there in our bedrooms they are there in our kitchen they are there in our garden they are there everywhere and live with them and we see them but we never get into the significance the science behind these kind of things so madam has done an exceedingly good job and this has uh, helped to widen the horizon of our students our students are a very good lot you know they 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 know what to pick and what to further uh, trickle and uh, learn more so i am very sure that they will make best use of it and it's a golden opportunity for us to get uh, uh raj dr raj mohana for this program and <clears throat> It is, it is equally important for us that Pabban Melath and Dr. Susan Epen are present here and uh, Shajil Mash has managed all these talks through his, uh, you know, uh, abilities to attract uh, various scientists from various areas while mine is limited to space. And uh, and I had thought that space is the vast canvas. But after listening this talk, as well as what I mentioned about the two other degree trees here, I find you know the vastness is very difficult to define. And this 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 kind of vastness is not there in space, although it is there everywhere. And now uh, knowledge wise, it has got its own its own boundaries. But here is no boundary here. It's something like that and uh, <clears throat> see uh, we can ever never miss insect it is there throughout everywhere so very very vast area very very interesting talk and uh, uh, we are extremely grateful to Rajmohan Amedam for coming uh, and talking to us you are from our own city our own Calicut uh, and we hope that you will uh, favor us, oblige us, help us to make our students develop and uh, become, uh, take the best out of their thing they, from their abilities and their capabilities and capacities. And you will help us. We are sure about it. Thank you very, very much. Sure. Now about Zoological Survey of India, yes. uh, ZSI, yeah. we have had uh, an occasion to interact in the Calicut uh, Center. They helped us a great deal to nurture a group of students of NAND standard and they gave a project to them, a group of about I think eight or nine students. Our Damodaran Marsh is here. He was the man who coordinated it and he is going to give us a lot of thanks if he's here and uh, he did a lot of uh, efforts and uh, took the students there and they had a few sessions and uh, they were to study on monkeys uh, there is a temple uh, somewhere about 10 uh, 15 kilometers away from here there were there are a lot of monkeys fine we had some difficulties in getting into that place but that was a very interesting uh, thing i went there i went to the zsi office interacted with the people and found it very interesting and our student what i wanted to say is that our students are not limiting their thing in space alone they are getting into the wider areas and uh, and uh, this kind of uh, opportunity of uh, persons like you coming and talking to them will further widen their horizon so i am very very uh, uh, happy that we had a very nice uh, uh, time and uh, it's an excellent thing it's an excellent day excellent thing and wonderful world of insects is really you made it really wonderful thank you very much madam thank you thank you really sir uh, after uh, we'll get some few reflection from tamban sir he is available here he yeah, he's supported us to breaking this uh, the compartments of science and he 
he advocated for this interdisciplinary approach that's why he supported us he suggested us we uh, took it as a value and now we think that it was a right way and uh, and before tamban sir starts and we have, we have to mention two more things one is that we have uh, we have made an ecosystem for the students from this ecosystem some few talents are emerged uh, two of them got in you know, a national talent search examination uh, we know two students are here and yesterday four students received innovation uh, award from the ministry of uh, <coughs> department of science and technology four inspire yeah, from inspire award uh, received by four students uh, they are uh, <coughs> they are navneet s and uh, adidev jd then george shipu and shivananda you are these are the people uh, students with us and uh, that uh, i share with you man all, all of them 10 standard all of them 10 standard thank you yes these are the things going on here and i invite uh, uh, tamban sir to make a reflection on these things thank you welcome sir uh, thanks uh, sajid lakshmi it was a very excellent in fact journey to the world of insects and uh, really grateful that uh, to Raj Mohan Abud actually take this up actually. So thank you very much. Uh, I think she, she already has given a lot of explanations. We don't have to talk more on it. Thank you so much. I think you should actually expand actually. Although this is a space club, I think uh, you're seeing the results now. It's getting more expanded and uh, everything is space ultimately, isn't it? <laughs> so I think that is good. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Raj Mohan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Samar sir, and uh, we we hope that you will. We, we, are, we are sure that we'll, you will continue our uh, support. Sure. support any, any support from my side, uh, it will be always there. Okay, sir. Thank you. We are happy to hear that. Not and, Susan uh, here. Not Susan. No, I look there, uh, but she has left. Uh, not uh, with me. With us. Okay. And then it's our interesting question and session. I invite Fabian Fursha. He is a 10th standard student. He is yeah. also, also a brilliant student, gifted children uh, student and recognized by the government of Kerala. And I invite uh, Fabian Fursha to handle the Q&A session. Welcome, Fabian Fursha. Thank you. Okay, Shijil sir, am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes. Are audible and visible, clear. Okay. Okay, thank you, Shijil sir. And before beginning the Q&A session, I would like to cite my hearty thanks to speaker and all the participants who utilized this time. First of all, big thanks to Raj Mohana Madam that we were able to understand about the diversity of insects and parasitoids, wasps, and about the illegal trade, and it was a colorful travel through the world of insects. So, let us start into today's Q&A session. Let's begin from the first query we received. As usual, we received a lot of questions and in the past 30 webinars, the questions we received was of high quality and it was so puzzling for us to pick from it. And even in this webinar, the webinar was very much effective and we received many questions too. So the first question is from Varun of a member of our UL Space Club and his question is there are many uh, insects mainly moth which carry which is a carrier of few diseases what are the presence of such moth or such insects in Kerala uh, moth did you mean moth M-O-T-H yes madam uh, See, moths as carrier of diseases is not much there. Moths are more associated with plants. Okay, so maybe they can transmit a few diseases to plants and this uh, crops uh, and this agro ecosystem. But moths transmitting diseases to animals or uh, humans, uh, it, it is not much documented. Okay, madam, thank you for your response. And so let's move to the next question. It's from Sriya KG. In the COVID-19 period, so many people came to the field of agriculture, especially in biofarm. How mm. these affect the small insects and biodiversity thought? See, 
organic farming and uh, farming can be done in several ways if you go to high intensive this uh, uh, insecticide oriented and uh, that kind of uh, agriculture it is not much friendly to the organisms there instead if you go towards the organic farming then certainly uh, you are in a way promoting the diversity there not doing any harm so it, it it all depends on what you choose to do okay madam and thank you for the response and the next question is from vibo p pradeep a fifth standard student he has asked two questions and the first one is what is the most poisonous insect in the world and the second sorry, is sorry, what is the most harm, harmful to madam hmm. am i audible yeah harmful harmful insect uh, what is most harmful thing to insects both harmful. questions which are the most poisonous and it, most harmful to insects it's a very relative question uh, harmful thing to insect means uh, if you want to control it to kill it of course we have many chemical agents uh, like um, even the bio biological agents like pyrethrin many many are uh, elements and formulations are there but even even our climate change and the basic uh, temperature global warming all these things can be lethal to insects particularly to those in the temperate uh, climate so that question is very much relative it depends what insect you are particularly focusing upon so to kill a mosquito what is harmful for a mosquito we all know it may be different for a fly it may be different for some other organism so it is very much relative thank you so much ma'am and i think it is the one of the most confusing questions we received and the next question is from our part uh, it's about the pest control the pest control is industry is always searching for new methods when it comes to get rid of pests mm. and what will be the future of pest controls and how can we make it as a non harmful method of prevention of pests see this is very important aspect because we have to feed our growing population so instead of relying on highly chemical uh, kind of uh, farming we have to uh, encourage this um, integrated approach where um, several technologies related to farming practices as well as control of uh, insects or other pests are practiced in a in in an environment friendly manner we have a lot of bio agents like our parasitoids are there then this uh, fungal agents are there bacterial agents are there to control the pest and these are widely being employed and practiced also with great success so i think it will be a combination of this integrated um, pest management we will be able to provide a safe and uh, future tomorrow thank you madam and now speaking of locus we have a question from the same varun bro mm. and what which condition which condition is the most suitable for the rapid growth of locus see in the uh, taking the example of the recent outbreak the sudden increase of the humidity uh, due to the two cyclones in the indian ocean the the uh, ex scientific explanations was that way the change in the atmospheric conditions the favorable uh, kind of changes 
uh, contributes to the developmental phases of this locus and the swarming happens so in a way that is also related to this climate change and global warming Okay, yeah, madam. And the next question is from Ashwini, a member of your space club. Nature, nature is the greatest textbook. We have a lot of a uh, lot to learn from this nature, especially from insects. Yeah. And Ashwini have heard of vaccination, which is just like the mosquito bite, and which is not so scary. Like that, what are the other things that we can apply in our day-to-day -day life? Mm, I don't think I can give a ready-made answer for that. Like uh, that biomimicry, the last slide which I have explained, many technologies can be developed after observing uh, the different attributes and uh, uh, how uh, the life and uh, means life progress. regarding insects so i i am i am not able to give a ready made answer maybe it is something to think and answer thank you madam and we have a last story that uh, is about in insect preservation and during the exercise of collecting insects what are the facts we should what are the things we should look about when we are collecting or preserving insects and you can collect in the space that uh, nasa has sent many sort of uh, insects to space and most of them was most of them came back as dead and what all things we should look for when we send a insect to the space insects and space is the question yes madam and along with the um, insect preservation methods see um, there are certain insects which which can uh, tolerate different kinds of um, pressures or uh, uh, different environment different para environmental conditions so maybe cockroach is an example of that and uh, uh, i uh, this is my personal opinion i am not much aware of that particular topic like uh, insects in space research uh, but this is what i feel that uh, those uh, insects which are hard and uh, resistant enough to uh, tough conditions means um on, only those kind of uh, insects can be selected for this kind of uh, research of course um it also depends on what what question you want to answer like um, different insects are adapted for uh, different uh, ways of living uh as we told about that um, oxygen level for monitoring we have that aquatic insects so uh, their features are also different so if which question you want to answer depending on that you can also choose that particular insect which is matching to that affinity i should say that Okay, thank you so much, madam, and thank you for the valuable answers. And thanks to all participants for using this time much energetically. And the Q and A is over now. And if any query, any of your questions are left behind, you can ask and discuss it in our Cosmos community group. Interested people can contact our our numbers, and it will be given by Varun Bro. Once more. Thank you, Rathmohana, madam. And no. I would like to hand over any questions uh, which I am able to answer. I am happy to do that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I would like to hand over to our own Shajil sir. Shajil sir, please. Yeah.
okay uh, thank you febin krishad uh, we are wondering the questions and the way uh, rajmanam ma'am addressed these things <laughs> and it was a really interesting thing and we can we can say that the academic aspect of our mom is very high and we are uh, taking you as a role model as a teacher being a teacher like that uh, we feel so and uh, this is uh, the last webinar of this year 2020 and wish all of you uh, coming 2021 free from the covid pandemic that's yes. our prayer and expectation and we are so optimistic that we will tide over all these things and we will meet again and that's the things and before we uh, we go to the uh, next things and what next we will hear from our inche kutisa and after that there is official uh, word of thanks by actually ot and uh, ma'am we request you to stay with us for sure, sure. So, so, uh, good sir please yes shadil uh, marsh what next is always an important question <coughs> Uh, this year is coming to a close and we had 31 uh, webinars in addition uh, several special programs as well and all went very well and as uh, just now indicated we are waiting for uh, an offline uh, program of course we had to wait for some more time so what is happening is in uh, next month next year next month schools are getting reopened and students are getting engaged and we should not take too much of their time away so we have decided to have the webinar instead of weekly now monthly every second saturday we are going to have it we are not announced it officially so far this is the first time we are saying we will be putting it in our site uh, next uh, webinar will be the second saturday 9th uh, january the speaker there are two speakers uh, we have uh, lined up uh, whoever will confirm first we will have him uh, and the topic also will be known in uh, in a day or two so we will announce it so this is uh, about uh, the what next thank you thank you pisa for your uh, valid information and announcement and pisa is guiding all the students and uh, teacher community and make this uh, system here is running and these things and next we go to the uh, what of thanks session uh, that will be done by ashwini oti she is a she is a student and standard student and she is also recognized as a gifted children by government of kerala uh, from uh, she is from omasheri koyiko district itself and uh, and after that there will be the wonderful session of this one more thing that is the quiz session uh, we have ul space class quiz and the quiz master with masters will imbibe the things from the uh, uh, madam's uh, talk and they will make few questions from the already made it and they are posted in a google form then uh, they will do soon there and the students are waiting for that and i invite ashudi ot to make the vote of thanks from the heart Uh, to our Raj Mohan Ma'am and all the participants. Actually, OT, please uh, switch on your camera also. Ma'am, want to see you? Okay. Actually, one one just just one second. Okay, Actually, okay. one thing is our this poster, which is which we which every week appear. It is made by students. The write up, the write up as well is uh, generally from them. Maybe some occasion we they may need a small help from us, but otherwise it is from them. So. Uh, all these things, except what uh, Shadil Mash and me, we are doing occasionally. The rest of the work is their work only. It's a great, it's a great uh, teamwork. I should congratulate you for the uh, effort taken and the time taken by you all. Great effort. Thank you, ma'am. And actually, this uh, this program is being uh, live streamed by these children also. They are doing it. Okay, and the YouTube channel is very live. And I invite uh, Ashwini or Tim to make his word of thanks. Okay, welcome. Okay, sir, am I audible? Yes, yes. One, good also. Uh, hi, good evening to all. It's our thirty-first webinar session about the wonderful world of insects. As we know, nature is a great book, and we have a lot to study from nature. and other organisms in nature so it's our responsibility to protect the nature 
Today's session was handled by Dr. K. Rajmohana, ma'am, and it was a it was such a wonderful experience for us. Ma'am gave us a clear picture of the world of insects. I am here for the vote of thanks for today's session. Thanks to Dr. Rajmohana, ma'am, who handled our session. Thank you very much, ma'am, and Thank thanks you. to the ISR veterans who are present here. and thanks to our mentor shri ek kutti sir moderator shajil sir and all the students coordinators of us place club and thanks to all the participants who attended the session thanks to all okay uh, th thank you ma'am and we are hearing the words of uh, rajmohana ma'am and uh, i i made a an omission because she was the uh, the leader of this nbs the magazine and along that she is the national leader of green skill uh, that's a thing uh, that i i i i omitted that uh, please uh, i think uh, i have to remember it again that's why okay thank you ma'am it's see yes. being 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 a, being a colic coder <laughs> i think we will, we will have opportunity to i think uh, interact and even see each other in some occasion yes. we will i think we will we will have some if the covid uh, favors us we may be having a program in the summer and subsequently i think we will uh, uh, yeah, request you invite you to sure, come sure, sure. the same also on the basis of green skill we, i think that would be the topic green skill yeah. <laughs> we can do that Thank you.